Welcome to Attican Plays Railway Empire. All right, hi, this is Attican, and welcome to part two of our playthrough in our pursuit of perfection on Metropolis, where we're using the lady. And in part one, we got off to a great start. We built this ring of passenger mail lines kind of all around our territory there from New York to Albany to Syracuse to Buffalo to Pittsburgh and then finally connected up uh, Pittsburgh to New uh, Baltimore and then uh, started running cloth and uh, setting up the cloth industry to go to New York. We ran uh, direct line. Then we built our in inner ring of, of uh, freight line and we're using that to uh, carry meat from Buffalo to New York and we're using that as well to carry um, beer from Albany and we have just set up at the end of part one we had just set up this warehouse so we're going to start supplying New York with um, raw materials and at this point in the game we've already grown New York to 80,000 and we haven't supplied it with any raw materials we've just been shipping uh, textiles and clothing from uh, New from uh, Baltimore to New York we were shipping of course the beer from Albany and the meat from Buffalo and that's it so uh, now at this point, we're gonna start setting up some lines to um, feed that warehouse with uh, some raw materials, some uh, wheat and milk and uh, veggies and that kind of stuff. So, and oh, and we've set it up so that it'll automatically pick up the, those logs up there. So we're supplying logs as well. So let's move ahead a little bit. This is just kind of basic track building and um, uh, we'll move ahead just a little bit to we get till we get to the veggie line because it's kind of interesting. Okay, so we're getting ready to set up our uh, veggie line into the warehouse, and the veggies, as you can see, are to the south and east of our main line, and that first line you see there is the. Uh, doesn't actually go to the warehouse, it goes into the uh, city station in New York. So we need to get over to those tracks, the, the two tracks to the top of the screen, if you will. So the way we're going to do this, we're looking at, okay, how can we do this? Do we need a bill? Do we do a bridge? Do we have to go climb up and come back down? You know, what, what are we going to do? And I decided to just build a line that would just run across those lines. And none of these lines, and this is one of the things I like about this entire playthrough, is there aren't any really super busy lines. Now, someone could argue, well, that means you're not using your track efficiently and you're not getting the maximum use out of it. And I would argue that it's the opposite. It's that we're not having tie-ups and big congestion and we're getting making really good money all the time because our our tracks are not tied up. There's not a lot of waiting and queuing going on. But anyway, back to what we're doing here. So you notice it's a little hard to see. I mean, I know it's going to be hard for you because it was hard for me even down this close. But what we're doing is actually setting up um, connection switches that go from that very top track to the next one, then from that one to the to the next one down and from that second one from the bottom down to the bottom and by doing that that basically gives a train the ability to come in and go to any one of those four lines and what we'll do here is just connect our veggies in over here uh, to the um, well our left as we're looking at it on the screen we'll run it into our double track but then we'll have it that way it'll pick up and be able to go over so we'll have it make sure it comes in to the left of all that uh, the switches we just put in and have it come in like so and basically all it'll have to do now is come onto the track and just drive itself if you will over <laughs> to the to the lane it needs so if you think of it as this bottom is one one two three four it'll come in on one it'll go over to two then three three will be allow it to go up to the warehouse it'll come back on four and then it'll go four, three, two, and two will allow it to come out and exit uh, into the um, veggies. So simple, uh, hard to explain, but simple. So, so we've got, you can see there, we've got our 80,000, we've got 20 trains, we've, we've uh, knocked off a few of the tasks. So we're looking pretty good here at this point. 
and uh, our economy is, is very strong because of all those passenger lines, as I said in uh, part one. So now we've got veggies running, and you can see, see the path they're taking, going up and just kind of working their way across, then taking the double track and then working their way back. And this is not something you would want to do if you had super busy track right there. If there, if there were going to be dozens and dozens of trains coming in to that area, you wouldn't want a train going all the way across everything because it's basically made that entire area into a big long switch, um, effectively. So, um, uh, but again, good way to get across the track if you need to. All right. So, and, and ignore the little extra little cones. Those are just there for putting in your special junctions and stuff, which we don't need for this case. You can also see we're off to a good start. We're already at 27 clothing. We're only in 1831, and we've got to the end of 1833 to finish that. So, uh, the key there was to start the clothing as early as possible. Now, if you uh, remember from uh, part one, or if you haven't seen part one, I'll tell you, we bought that sawmill in Albany. Uh, and I said at the time, if you, <laughs> why are we buying a sawmill? Well, here's why. Because what we're gonna do now is set up our distillery. We're gonna put replace that sawmill with a distillery because we've got fruit nearby, we've got sugar over near Buffalo that we can ship over, and the fruit and the sugar combined are what we need for a distillery, and loading in or transporting 100 loads of alcohol, or yeah, alcohol, into um, New York is one of our uh, next targets. So there's the sugar right there. We even had, there's even a connection bonus for it, so perfect. So what we're doing here, just figuring out we got to get the sugar over into our inside line, which is the um, uh, freight line. Remember, we've got an outer loop of, of uh, passengers and an inner loop of freight. So uh, figuring out how can we, what's the best way to, to connect up that fruit and, and the sugar and everything and decide the best way to go, duh, is to put in a warehouse. So we're going to put in just a little warehouse here. It only has to collect a couple of things, fruit and sugar. We can give it more if we want. In fact, what we're gonna do now is clean up that little mess we made earlier in part one with the wheat. So we're gonna put wheat and fruit and sugar into this warehouse and clean up this uh, little mess of track right here to going around Albany and make it all uh, uh, a lot neater, let's say. And that's gonna give us the um, raw materials we need to support a distillery. It's also going to get the wheat into Albany, which it needs for the um, uh, beer industry. Now, at this point, when I'm doing this, I hadn't even decided to do the wheat yet. I'm looking at it and thinking, okay, I want, I know I want fruit and sugar in there. What's the best way to route it? And then I realized that if I get rid of that ugly uh, wheat line, I can clean everything up and make a, a reasonably a clean junction that, or yeah that goes into the warehouse and I can get all three products into that warehouse easily. So we're going to back off the, um, the wheat line and clean up everything around here so that uh, so that we have a nice easy access into that uh, um, warehouse. So see we can run our wheat directly into the warehouse we don't have to have all that passing passing through or over the um, main freight line. We don't have to worry about tying up traffic or anything like that. So uh, this will be good if I can manage to hit the right uh, socket. So what I decided to do there, rather than connect the wheat first, I decided to run it to the main line first. So we're going to connect into the uh, uh, main freight line. Remember that inner, inner two is our freight line. And then we'll connect the, uh, the wheat line into that line that's coming off the main line. There we go. And then we can just run our fruit down there and connect that into the wheat line that's coming in. And we'll have all the ability to ship all three products into that warehouse. And now we can, now we've got ourselves um, a nice distillery set up because 
Well, I'll show you what else we have to do. Obviously, there's more to it. This will give us the wheat, for sure. We've got the wheat. You can also see how the, the uh, sugar can come off of the freight line and go into the warehouse, or any product for that matter. We could ship other items if we wanted to. Expand that warehouse and put more stuff in there, but we won't. <laughs> And we're also going to take out that uh, train. I let that train run in so it would unload. Now, by just watching it unload slowly, now we're going to get rid of that train that was carrying wheat uh, from um, into the, directly into the city. And, when I, and I decided to be lazy here. I'm just going to delete the trains that were set up to go to the city, and I'll re rebuild the line uh, to go into the warehouse. And here comes our fruit, and the fruit will be easy to tie into the uh, into that wheat line back here. So there we've got uh, we've got a fruit line set up and we've got a wheat line set up and we can start put, pumping those uh, items into the warehouse. Now unfortunately I didn't uh, set them up so that the supply towers would be a nice uh, match but uh, uh, we can set them up at any rate. In fact it looks like I didn't even have a, a supply tower for the wheat. So we can set up our lines for those two, and then we'll go deal with the uh, corn. I'm sorry, sugar. And we're still running the uh, grasshoppers for everything. And doing great with the grasshoppers and we'd love to have the uh, John Bulls everywhere but every time I want to do the upgrade I come up with an eye reason why I should uh, do something else that's more important. Now here we're going to use a little different technique to get across. We're actually going to build a bridge over which is another way to do it obviously you can build a bridge over your the, the passenger and freight lines and then just connect it up on the other side like so. So that, that'll get the, uh, the our fruit line, sugar line to go across the, uh, the main two lines and then come back and join back into the freight line. Now we could have used the same technique here we used with the uh, uh, veggies down there uh, near the uh, on the uh, Baltimore New York line but to get across that but uh, went with a bridge here just to show a different technique. The bridge, honestly, uh, well, there's two trade-offs here. That bridge, of course, is going to slow down our train a bit because it, it, it adds a slope it has to, to go over. But that's not, the, I don't find that to be the world's biggest deal because, uh, yes, it slows you down for a moment, but then you speed back up and you just, maybe you have to run an extra train or so to compensate for that lack of speed. But um, that's better than tying up or blocking some main artery that really has a lot of traffic. But again, we're, we've got a system here that really doesn't have a ton of traffic anywhere, which is excellent. All right, so we're going to run four trains there. It's a long line. Make sure we keep sugar down there. And we'll set up our uh, wheat and our uh, fruit to go into the warehouse. And then we'll be ready to uh, make a swap out and uh, have ourselves a distillery in Albany. And then we'll have a nice, we've already got a direct line, automatic line running between Albany and New York. On, on the freight line so that will allow us to ship both the beer and the alcohol to um, New York
All right, so we've got our distillery going, and now we see a uh, connection bonus to this uh, cattle ranch down here, which really has no value to us, except that bonus does. So we're going to be cheesy and take the bonus and then immediately delete the track in the station and make a whole bunch of money for doing nothing. Uh, so now uh, we've got the opportunity. There was a connection bonus for uh, Washington that had shown up. I think I've already missed that. I don't know if it's still there or not. Doesn't look like it. But we're going to go ahead and make the connection to, to Washington anyway. Why not? It's a very short line, easy to set up, very inexpensive, and uh, will make uh, surprisingly good money uh, because it stay fairly busy shuttling people from uh, Baltimore to Washington. New York has grown and it's past the 90,000 plateau, which means it could take another business. And we want to put something in that we can definitely supply. We actually would have done paper mill because we've already got logs up there, but um, we're actually too early for it. We're moving too fast and it's, they're not available yet. So what we're going to do is put in a dairy business because we also have uh, milk being run into New York. So we're going to put a dairy business over there out of the way in case we need to expand a, a platform or something. And we've got milk coming in from over here um, uh, at Nolan Breeding. And we'll just make sure that we've, uh, um, well, we're in good shape. It looks like we have enough trains because we have, actually have a train waiting to load. There'll be a little more pressure on it. Uh, now that there's a dairy industry, the, the milk demand will go up. So we need to make sure that we can uh, get the milk shipments into uh, the warehouse and keep that bus that uh, dairy business uh, supplied. But that shouldn't be a problem at all. So um, there, and and the reason you want to make sure you get the right industry in New York is because if you put a bad industry that can't get supplied, that's going to hurt your demand satisfaction, obviously, in New York. So. Uh, you definitely want to try to manage these industries and you know you've all, not only got to get that weaving and then clothing set up so you can deliver the clothes and get that distillery set up so you can deliver the, the alcohol but you also have to uh, make sure that you have the right industries in New York itself so that you don't get one in there I mean the computer will put some choice that you just hate that you know needs coal and iron ore or some some such thing and and you just you just don't want to go there so you definitely want to control those industries and try to have the money ready and and keep an eye on uh the city growth and be ready to put new industries in there when they uh, open up So we got our um, sugar and uh, app, uh, sugar and fruit starting to go to Albany. So now, now we can demolish that sawmill and replace it with the um, um, distillery. So we're going to make sure we have enough money to be able to afford uh, tearing one down and building one up. So we're going to close out our bonds, open up a bigger bond. And now we can take down that uh, sawmill and um, put in a distillery, and we'll that'll start the flow of alcohol to uh, New York. And we noticed another, something else completed while we were doing this, but uh, I have to check to see. 
And the other thing we'll have to do is keep watching to upgrade our distillery and upgrade our weaver and tailor so that we're making sure we're getting a good flow of those products into New York. I think our quarterly profit just hit. We hit a $2 million quarterly profit at the end of September. So that's uh, another one checked off our list. Now we connected to Washington and we've got, when we want to keep our opponents from coming into Washington, so we're gonna put another station in there. It's probably something we should have done long ago anyway. And we're the lady and the lady makes great money on passenger and mail lines. So why don't we go down here to Norfolk, which old Don Lorenzo has been nice enough to start growing for us. And let's run a line from Norfolk up to Washington and make it a passenger and mail line. We should make great money on it. And it'll give us a nice long line that we can then, you know, kind of put some good staff on and try to get as express lines or, uh, you know, at least the fastest lines we can get so we can make as much money as possible uh, on our passengers and mail and have just, you know, and we've got the time here while we're kind of waiting on things to happen. We've got the time to um, uh, build this little line and it won't cost us a, too awful much and we'll, we'll be able to make great profit from it and build up our company value by having more assets. So we're waiting on the clothing. We're going to have to watch that and make sure that we uh, keep the clothing going to New York. And we should be starting the flow of uh, uh, alcohol. In fact, that's what I'm checking here. Is, is it really uh, happening yet? So uh, looking, looking for some, we've got beer. Now we want alcohol. There we go. Now we're seeing some alcohol going good. So our shipments of alcohol have started. So <laughs> apparently Albany's a place to go if you want to drink because they got the brewery and the distillery. So um, now we need to finish off that line we just started uh, down to Norfolk and get that going. And um, double track it and set it up, you know, passenger mail only. Uh, but um, Let's just uh, let's just move on here. Uh, this part of it's uh, just basic track building. All right, now we notice that an analyst has popped up. That's always great news. I must be excited. Look at that <laughs> cursor going all over the place. So when an analyst pops up, even if you play fast like me, slow it down, raise all the money you can, and then either use the analyst to make money or to buy somebody. In this case, we're going to use the analyst to uh, increase our position in Don Lorenzo because we're trying to buy him out. Uh, so we're going to reduce the share price for Don Lorenzo. All you have to do is click and wait just this moment and then we're going to go in and buy as much of Don Lorenzo as that money will buy and it'll get us a nice solid chunk of uh, Mr. Don Lorenzo, 28%, uh, so good deal there. So uh, now we're up to 42% of buying out Don Lorenzo and looking better on that task. So remember I said we need to keep track of, uh, uh, keep upgrading our tailor and our weaver so that we can continually ship the um, clothing over to New York. So you have to kind of check the demand in New York and any place else that might get it. And you have to realize too that in this particular case that, that uh, cloth is used by the city and by the tailor. So the city of Baltimore is going to eat up some of the uh, um, cloth and some of the cloth is going to be shipped directly to New York. So we got to make sure that we produce more cloth than we do 
then we have a need for the tailor um, in order to uh, keep the tailor satisfied. In other words, if you tried to match them and make the same amount of cloth as the tailor required in Baltimore, you would actually come up short because if nothing else, the city of Baltimore itself would consume some of the cloth before it ever got to the tailor. So uh, uh, you got to kind of look at the total consumption of cloth and clothing to figure out how much you need to uh, have uh, your weaving industry produce. So now we can uh, expand our weaver and our tailor and uh, we'll make sure now that we've expanded the weaving, we, we check the um, depot there and we see that the uh, there's more cotton to be shipped. So when you see a situation where you've got uh, a rural station and it's got a platform of goods to be shipped and no trains to be found, that's a sign you need more trains. Now you can do the math and figure it all out, but the simplest thing to do is look at your station and if there's nothing there to ship, that means you've got enough trains. Your trains are shipping as fast as the uh, uh, farm or factory or farm or mine or whatever is producing. But if you've got a bunch of goods laying there ready to be shipped and no trains, that, uh, well, guess what? We need more trains. So we added some trains there so that we can keep that cotton flowing because it's a whole big process. The cotton has to go to the weaver. The weaver has to feed the cloth. The cloth has to get shipped to New York. you got to keep all aspects of that uh, going. And now we're just going to finally go through and put maintenance on everything. Uh, we've held off because we had so many other things to do. And uh, once again, who knows, maybe I waited too long, but certainly seems to work to not rush to it. So we'll put maintenance on our trains now. We'll see a little slowdown in our economy for about a quarter or so because um, practically every train will come in for maintenance. And I really, this was a goof up. I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have put the maintenance on. What I should have done first is change to the John Bull. Then once I change to the John Bull, then start going through and putting in the maintenance. Now why? Because if we have brand new trains, they're not all going to stop for maintenance at the same time. Every Right now the way it is, except for these last few lines here that we just built, every train is going to come in and be maintained. So we're just going to get this big crunching slowdown for a moment. So what I should have done again is upgrade to the John Bull and immediately after that start putting in the maintenance. And you might say, well, but you don't need the maintenance now. you got new trains. But that's the perfect time to put it in because that way as each of the new John Bulls comes in, um, as it needs maintenance, it'll be prepared and ready and we'll get really good uh, steady flow from that on and we won't uh, have this giant quarter meltdown where every train has to be maintained. But what's happening here is every train we've got now is coming in and, and going through maintenance. And not only that, but I'm giving it maintenance that I could have avoided completely because I'm maintaining trains that I'm getting ready to um, replace. So I, I, I get a big... Uh, Geez, uh, Attican, think for a minute on this one. I really messed this one up. Um, should have done it in the opposite order. Trade the, trade the trains, you know, upgrade the trains, then put in maintenance. Now notice right here, we're in great shape on the clothing, but look at the uh, alcohol. It was only at six. We've only shipped six alcohol. And we've got, we're, we're making 3.2 a week. And uh, just a quick aside, notice also I'm putting a university in Albany. Typically I'm a museum guy. Now why wouldn't I want to grow Albany even more? Because Albany's consuming my alcohol that's one problem, and they're consuming the beer, and I want all that stuff to go to New York. This one's all about New York. But notice here, if we looked in July, it was at six. Now we look in August, it's still at six. But our, we've shipped five clothing from Baltimore, but we've shipped zero alcohol. So what is going on? We're making it, we're not shipping it, and we know that Albany isn't drinking all of it. Uh, those uh, New York State politicians may, uh, may like their alcohol, but they don't drink that much. So we need to figure out what's going on with our shipments of alcohol. Uh, 
Okay, so remember it was six in, ju in July. Now we're way ahead to October and it's still at six and we've completed the clothing. What gives here? So we go over here, um, here we go. And we notice there are 23 um, alcohol to ship. There are 23 uh, available to be shipped out, to ex be exported out of the city, and the um, and actually <laughs> I say we notice I notice it watching it when I'm playing it I hadn't quite figured that out yet I'm still thinking I need more alcohol, but Albany has has like 20 some in its internal warehouse so it's got its own supply and it's got a huge supply. So there's no reason we shouldn't be shipping. But, and, we, and as we saw there, we have like over 20 uh, uh, boxcars of alcohol ready to be exported somewhere. And where could they go? Of course, they could go to New York. That's where we want them. So I'm um, spending money. I'm, I'm closing out a bond. There's another task completed. These things are completing so fast. So now we've got, we're up to a level four alcohol. And we, uh, we've grown uh, New York up now to 180,000. It just keeps growing. Growing New York is not the hard part of this uh, uh, scenario. You think it is. You think that's what it's all about. It is not the hard part. That's one of the reasons we're doing the lady because there's other things that are harder. So now we, we know we also, if we're, if we're going to grow that fast, we got to start buying these people. So we're going to buy out Don Lorenzo in 10% in chunks. So every time I get a little over a million bucks, I'm going to go buy a big... Uh, a nice 10 percent chunk of uh, Don Lorenzo. So now we're all the way to April of next year. It's almost been a year and no alcohol has shipped to New York, even though New York is now up to 250,000, we've already finished growing New York. So I'm looking at this and then I realize what's going on. I've only been running two trains, this is so stupid. I'm only running two trains from Albany to New York. That's, that's one problem. The second problem is New York is so big that it's consuming, the trains are being eaten up with beer. So in other words, they're getting running full loads of beer into New York every time, and the alcohol is never getting touched. So I'm going to set up trains now that have priority on alcohol to get the get that the shipment started into New York. And this should have been done uh, uh, long ago. We would we would already be finished with everything. But then of course uh, we still want to buy out uh, Don Lorenzo. We're we're at like 82 percent right now, so we're we're looking good for getting him bought out. And uh, we only need we only need a few million left to uh, to buy them out, and I'm still sticking to my 10% share. So, so uh, continuing to buy Don Lorenzo, and we finally figured out that um, our problem with our shipments of uh, from Albany were not enough uh, trains, and also the trains were just hauling beer. That's all they could haul, and so we made some trains with priority alcohol, and now we'll start seeing alcohol shipments. And this, of course, should have been going on all along. Now, in fairness, I wasn't as I, in this uh, narration. I'm focusing on this because it's kind of the thing we need to kind of the lesson to take away from this. A lesson for me and lesson for all of us. You got to watch that kind of those shipments and the priorities. But uh, you know, when I'm playing, I'm not. There, you know, there's a lot of other things I'm thinking about, and I'm not just focusing on that one thing. But but I'm trying to get Don Lorenzo bought before we finish, so it kind of worked out nicely. I like those optional tasks. You can keep going with those after you finish the uh, main ones, and you can continue playing and still get a perfect score by doing them afterwards, assuming you have enough time to do them by the time constraints that they've given you. Um, but I like to try to get the optional tasks done before I finish the... Um, the main task. So see there, we're already up to 30. We've gone from six to 30 just because of having those trains uh, prioritized with um, alcohol.
So now another analyst has popped up and we've got a little bit of Don Lorenzo left to buy. So we're going to have the analysts start a vicious rumor and reduce uh, Don Lorenzo's stock uh, shares. And we're gonna go in and buy the last little chunk of Don Lorenzo to get that task out of the way. So we buy out Don Lorenzo, take him over, do a merge, and liquidate everything. Now we've got a ton of cash. Now we can go out and just buy out Trisha outright and liquidate her and take everything. Now we got now we're flush with cash. We've gotten rid of all of our competition. And we've all we've got to do now is finish off the alcohol. It's up to 46 uh units and could have been higher had we been shipping all along but we've got it up to um, a level five now with this last expansion here so we've got a level five distillery pumping alcohol really for albany and um, new york because that's the only two places it could go we don't have any non-passenger lines going out of albany to anywhere else they only go there's only an automatic line going to uh, new york so um and really, probably no passengers of mail. We're just hauling beer with a couple of trains and uh, uh, alcohol with a couple of trains. All right, so as this is uh, flying by, let's wrap up uh, what we did because we're almost done here. I mean, all we have to do is finish off shipping that alcohol, and we have a level five uh, distillery up in Albany that's well supplied with uh, sugar and fruit. And so we, we should get a steady shipment of... Uh, uh, alcohol going into New York in just a matter of time before it wraps up. So the good things we did, uh, first one was the outer loop of passengers and mail only. Remember, we got the lady with all the uh, passenger bonuses. Um, outer loop of New York to Albany, Albany to Syracuse, Syracuse to Buffalo, Buffalo to Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh to Baltimore, passenger mail only lines. Then we have got directly on that clothing, we ran cotton from down there near Pittsburgh up to uh, Baltimore. We put a weaver in Baltimore to go along with the uh, tailor that's already there so we could supply it with cotton and then um, the uh, clothing would be automatically, the tailor would not be automatically supplied by the weaver. And we, then we ran an automatic line between New York and Baltimore so that the from Baltimore we could deliver the clothing directly to New York So that got that first one going. So we're making good money with our passengers of mail. We've got an early start on our clothing then we watch and um, We check the growth and we end up putting a distillery in Albany and that allows us to uh, create uh, the alcohol that we need we've set up a warehouse where we can put the fruit and uh, sugar into that warehouse in Albany to supply the distillery. So now we've got Albany supplying beer and alcohol to New York on a direct line. And we've, uh, we're, our basic economic engine, of course, is our, our, all the passenger and mail traffic. And uh, the rest of it is, just, and the city growth just goes. I mean, at one point, you know, we build the, the warehouse down there and put some raw materials in New York, but we actually, the original growth was just off of meat, a meat line. Uh, you know, we've got this inner loop of freight and this inner loop of freight goes all the way from Baltimore to um, New York. And the, there's a direct line from Baltimore to New York running um, meat and some passengers and mail so that the meat is supplied to New York. And of course, we've got the beer coming in from Albany. And then we've got, um, you know, uh, that, that's all it took and the, the uh, cloth and clothing from Baltimore. And that's all it took to grow New York to 80,000 in a timely fashion. And then we uh, added in some raw materials and got our um, alcohol set up. So we're pumping alcohol in there. We, we watched the industries and put in a uh, dairy industry in uh, New York because we knew we could supply it with milk and so all the industries in New York are being supplied so New York's getting plenty of manufactured goods it's getting plenty of raw materials and so it, it just kept growing so growing New York was very easy in this one 
We eventually ran a line from Washington down to Norfolk to have a nice passenger mail line to make us lots of good money there on the express line. And then we started buying up our competitors. We used analysts the first time to actually make money. We um, bought a bunch of stock in Trixie. Then we uh, used the analysts to raise, artificially raise her stock price. Then we sold all that to make some money. And then from then on, we started using, every time an analyst came up, we used it to reduce the stock price of um, uh, whoever we wanted. In this case, Don Lorenzo. We started decided to buy Don Lorenzo. So we started working on that. Once we bought Don Lorenzo, we had so much cash, we could just immediately buy Trixie. So uh, life is good. So now we're just waiting on the alcohol to finish shipping. And, oh, and the big problem, the big lesson learned was we were shipping direct line from Albany to New York. However, New York is so big and consuming so much beer that the only thing that was shipping from Albany was beer to New York, and we needed to increase our shipping and prioritize alcohol on a couple of trains in order to make sure that the alcohol was shipped, and we should have done that much earlier. We would have finished this uh, even sooner had we done that. But let's, uh, let's go to the end and see how we did. All right, so looks like we got our president rating. We got 10 out of 10 on task, 20 out of 20 on timing. Took us three years and 11 months, and we got a perfect score. In this case, 50. That's as high as you can go, at least with a normal pause mode. So I hope there was something in that uh, that will help you to play Metropolis. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it'll help you become a better player and I hope you'll join us for our next Railway Empire video. Thank you.